Thanks for having me. Um, it's uh, certainly an interesting time uh, to be talking about uh, kind of the macro outlook here and what I see for you know, the markets and, and the metals. Just to kind of get started, I'm basically probably one of the bigger bulls, maybe the biggest bull on Wall Street these days and have been since the lows in March. I believe that uh, the, the massive fiscal and monetary response to the virus last March, that response is the wind at our backs that's going to push this market much higher. Um, it's obviously given us some sort of a V recovery in the economy. We're nowhere near back to where we were prior to COVID, but uh, we've had a remarkable rebound coming from a very deep trough. So so both monetary and fiscal policy has been uh, a big help in terms of turning the economy back up. There's still in the marketplace an awful lot of bearishness out there, skepticism towards what's happened uh, since March. All that feeds into what I think is going to be a very powerful last two months of the year. So I'll, I'll cover a little bit of the economy first and then uh, go into the stock market. And then finally, what I think uh, a lot of you are here for, which is uh, my metals outlook. So anyway, the economy, I, I do feel uh, we are slowing, no question about that. The the big monetary stimulus really peaked out in terms of the momentum of, of what the Fed was doing back in July, and they went on pause. Um, you know, the balance sheet, the Fed's balance sheet grew from something like three trillion to eight uh, up to a um, little over seven trillion. And I think Powell and, and uh, the governor's kind of looked at things and said, we really are way beyond anything the Fed has ever done before. And you've begun to see them um, not at the same pace, but begin to uh, put more money back into the system. Uh, obviously, there's been talk for several months now about a, a next relief package. Most of that happened in the spring. With the election, October became problematic. They just couldn't get it done. So I think, um, and I know there's a lot of uh, skepticism about a relief package now. So there's some sense that maybe this thing gets put off. I don't agree with that. I think you you are seeing a deceleration in the economy. You're going to see both monetary and fiscal stimulus before the end of the year. Even if it does get postponed into January or early February, uh, you know, the markets, I think, go up regardless. You know, from a market standpoint, um, I think, you know, market peaked out uh, pretty much at Labor Day, and has spent two months consolidating the big run from March to Labor Day, and you know went from 2,200 up to almost 3,600. So you know, a hell of a run, and and I think we are now emerging from that two-month consolidation. And I have been out there for quite some time saying we're in the 38th year of a secular bull market that started back in August of 1982. And I think um, this last leg of it is going to be a parabolic uh, melt up. So I think that's where what we're just beginning this week. And we had a heck of a week um, with the election and then how the market responded to whatever they're responding to. And I do think you could see my, my target has been and continues to be 4,500 on the S&P. 15,000 on the NASDAQ, um, probably 36,000 on the Dow. And I think, if anything, I'm going to be too conservative. So that's what I think. And I think you could get to those targets before year end. So that would be a unprecedented historical uh, sprint to the finish. But that's what I see in terms of the miners and gold and silver. I, you know, I've had a forecast out there for um, some time that uh, we would see gold get up to 23 to 2500. Uh, I'd, I'd probably raise that to to the top end of that range, 2500, and and again say that uh, that's probably going to prove or very well could prove to be conservative. And I think we'll get there before year end. Silver, I've had a 35 36 target, and I'm feeling like that's a minimum. A bare minimum, in fact, I think uh, there is very much 
a possibility that's a conservative call and that we could see a you know a move through that and just keep on going the um metals peaked out in early August and they've been in consolidation since uh silver took a pretty good hit but you know step back and look where they came from silver went from 12 to 30 between March and early August and gold went from uh 1460 up to almost 2100 in that same time frame so they were due for rest and they've had 3 months of consolidation and I feel very strongly that we're emerging from that consolidation now, just started this week, really, and that uh, you're going to have a sprint to those targets I, I listed and probably beyond. GDX, um, I think, can probably rise to uh, something like 55 here. GDXJ may be up as high as 100 or a little more. And on the on the silver side, you know, SIL looks to me, like a $75 target makes sense for this year. And that's a heck of a run. Obviously, we're down under $50 there. So those are for this leg. Uh, I am a long-term bull in metals and mining. I think, uh, as I said, 2021 is going to be a tough year economically. I'm looking for some time and calling for a global deflationary bust. So as I tell people, I think we had the first stage of that bust last March and, and what it did with the economic shutdown around the world. And so 2021 is not the beginning of a bust. It's really the second phase of a bust. So you, you that got interrupted by this, you know, rebound because of all the stimulus. So I think we go back down next year, uh, whether some of that is virus related. I think some of it is probably going to be policy related, where if we get this huge run in the market and continue to have the economy okay into year end, you're going to see the Fed pause again and probably more than pause, actually pull money out. And I think we are in such a leveraged situation, you know, not just here, but around the world that any pause will cause a very quick turnaround in both the economy and the market. So so I, I think not necessarily right at the beginning of 2021, probably more uh, a few months in, but I think I think 2021 is going to go down as perhaps the worst economic year in in the post World War II era, and you could have a stock market that has its worst bear market in the post World War II era as well. Metals will get hit. I think most assets will get hit in that bust, but metals probably much less than other things because you know it may not take too long for the Fed to wake up to the fact that they've got to reverse themselves again. So you're going to see, and I think the response to a global deflationary bust and what I think will be the largest financial crisis in history uh, with a free falling global banking system, the response will be massive money from every central bank in the world. And I mean, you know, many times what we've seen this year. So I have said before, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the balance, the Fed balance sheet swell to something uh, like 20 trillion, maybe even higher, because uh, that's what it's going to take, I think, to, to stop the free fall in the banking system. So I think, you know, it's not all bad news. We've got a tough year. Um, you know, this year is kind of going to finish out very strong. Then a what I think will be a very difficult year, and then starting sometime in 2022, I think we begin you know, the next cycle. And in that cycle, with inflation being the dominant theme, uh, commodities of all kinds, um, but particularly the precious metals, will be leaders. You know, it's it's going to be a dramatic cycle, I think. And that will that will certainly be the to the benefit of the uh, metals and miners. Okay. Well, thank you uh, very much. You've been a good audience. And um, I appreciate you guys hosting this and having me. Uh, everybody uh, enjoy the ride.